Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining in. I greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, let us bow our hearts in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, O Lord, for the breath that you have given unto us so that we could see another day. We thank you, Lord, for your love, your grace, and your mercy. I pray, Lord, that even as your word goes forth this morning, I pray that it will find an abiding place in our hearts. I also pray, Lord, that whoever is listening to your precious word, Lord, they will take this word and sow it into the lives of others. Help us this morning, Lord Jesus, to do what you have commanded us to do, and that is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Bless your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning, church. Uh, this morning I'd like to thank our pastor Frank and Rita Boysen, along with the church council and its members, for another awesome opportunity to share God's word. This morning I'd like to speak to you about a very particular man in the Bible, and uh, his name is Nicodemus. Uh, let's read from the book of John, chapter 3. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if it were not, if you were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked, surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. Verse 7, you should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it's with everyone born of the Spirit. Verse 9. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, Jesus said, and you do not know or understand these things. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and what we testify to, what we have seen, but still people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Verse 14. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so too the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. In the scripture, we see Jesus and Nicodemus coming face to face. Jesus, the son of God, Nicodemus, the son of man. Now, Nicodemus was a very religious man, but he was not a child of God. Yes, beloved, he was a religious man, but he was not a child of God. This morning, my message is actually based on the flesh, born of the flesh and born of the spirit. He came to Jesus saying, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. Yes, beloved. He came to Jesus saying, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. Beloved, as children of God, you and I carry this awesome anointing. Just like how Nicodemus saw something special about Jesus. He knew that he has come from God. So too does the world look at you and I. And when they see us, they see a difference. They know that we are set apart. They know that we are different. When you are a child of God, people can tell. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 reads, In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. This morning, are you letting your light shine? Are you the salt of the earth? Are you adding flavor to those around you? Are you creating light in dark places? 
I pray this morning that God will use you and I in a mighty way. And beloved, just like how Nicodemus saw something different about Jesus, may our friends, families, neighbors, people that we come into contact with, see God's glory upon our lives. Jesus knew Nicodemus, as he knows all men. In John chapter 2, verse 24 and 25 reads, But Jesus would not entrust himself to them, for he knew all people. He knew all people. He did not need any testimony about mankind, for he knew what was in each person. Remember that we serve an omnipotent God. He is all-powerful. He is omniscient, all-knowing, and he is omnipresent, always present. That's the awesome and amazing God that we serve. And like he knew Nicodemus, God knows you and I this morning. He knows us better than we know ourselves. Yes, he searches our hearts. He sees all things, knows all things, and he's all powerful this morning. Jesus knew that Nicodemus needed more than a teacher. He needed a savior. He needed more than religion. He needed to be regenerated. He needed more than the law. He needed life. Beloved, when men and women approach us, with an answer or come to us with a problem do we have an answer for them do we have a solution can we point them to the direction of the savior can we help them to regenerate their lives yes beloved that's our calling this morning we need to show people the way because jesus is the only way the truth and the life in John chapter 3, verse 3, we see Jesus getting straight to the point when he said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Here we see Jesus speaking to him spiritually, but man always thinks physically because sometimes spiritual things are difficult to see or understand if you are not inclined with God. Then Nicodemus asked, how can a man be born when he is old? Then Jesus points out the difference between the two births. <clears throat> In John chapter 3 verse 6 reads, That which is born of the flesh is flesh. The flesh will never change. In the book of Job chapter 2 verse 9, when Job was going through the crisis in life, I mean, he had he, he was struck with boils all over his body. I'm sure he was in a lot of pain and discomfort. But Job knew and understood the things of God. He trusted God. I believe Job was a man of the spirit, a man after God's heart as well, a man who understood and knew God, unlike his wife who was of the flesh. In Job chapter 2 verse 9, she says, curse God and die. The flesh was talking because the flesh did not understand heavenly and spiritual things. That which is born of the spirit, the spirit will never change. Job chapter 2 verse 10, he replied, you are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we not accept, shall we accept good only from God and not trouble? You see, Job knew no matter what may come his way, his life was in the hand of God. He looked beyond earthly things. And he focused on the heavenly, spiritual, and <clears throat> things that would draw him closer to God. And beloved, he knew that he was in the hollow of God's palm. Yes, the trial must have been absolutely grueling. But Job trusted God. I pray this morning that you and I are not born of the flesh. And think of the flesh. And things of, think of things of this world which is of the flesh. But I pray that we will incline ourselves with God. I pray that God will rekindle a fire within us. I pray that God will open our spiritual eyes so that we can see the things of the Spirit. <clears throat> there are four things I'd like to point out this morning about the flesh birth. Number one, the flesh birth produces an old, sinful nature. 
And where do I find this? I find this in the book of Psalm, chapter 51, verse 5. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother con conceived me. You see, the psalmist was also spiritually inclined. The psalmist knew and God gave him a revelation to write these things. I mean, I was sinful at birth. We were born in sin, beloved. From the time our mothers conceived us, we were born in sin. We are born of the flesh. And because we are born in sin and born of the flesh, of my point number two, it produces a corruptible nature. Yes, beloved, although we are born in, the, uh, we are made in the image of Christ, we are born in sin because of uh, Adam and Eve that follows us throughout generations. But Jesus came and he broke that curse. But after being born as a child, as a baby, you still have a choice to make. Do you live your life in the flesh? Or do you live your life in the spirit and being led by the spirit? In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 reads, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So this morning, it's only through the word of God that we could make this amazing transformation in Christ and turn it around and come from incorruptible seed to a, from a corruptible seed to an incorruptible seed. From the flesh, a transition into the spirit. The flesh birth also produces an old nature under the sentence of death. Yes, beloved, from the time we are born, we are destined to die. There are two things that we have to go through in life and we are uncertain of. We do not know the date or the time that we will be born and we do not know the date or the time of when we will die. In Romans chapter 6 verse 23, it reads, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Oh Lord, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life. Yes, beloved, that gift is available for you and I. It's available for the world, for everybody. God, it's not in God's plan and will that man should perish. But it's in God's will and plan for man to serve him wholeheartedly. To turn back to him so that we may inherit heaven. We may inherit eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. He is the way, beloved. The old it, the flesh birth also produces an old nature that makes every unsafe person a child of the devil. Yes, beloved, that's my point number four of the flesh birth. It produces an old nature that makes every unsafe person a child of the devil. The question we should be asking ourselves this morning, am I saved by grace and am I a child of God or am I still unsaved? living and being a child of the devil we see this in the book of 1 john chapter 3 verse 10 this is how we know who the children of god are and who the children of the devil are anyone who does not do what is right is not god's child nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister so beloved this morning if you are doing things that are not in the plan and in the will of God. And if it's wrong, you are a child of the devil, the Bible says. The Bible says that if you do not love your brother or your sister and those around you, you are a child of the devil because God is love. We ought to carry that love. We need to portray Christ like character and attitude. So this morning, don't let the flesh birth and sinful nature and corruptible 
nature make you die to sin? Will you lose heaven? Will you lose eternal life? I pray that you will turn it around this morning. The new birth. The new birth. I also have four points on the new birth. And point number one is it produces a sinless nature. In 1 John chapter 3 verse 9. No one who is born of God will continue to sin. Because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. Yes, beloved. The day you choose to be baptized and turn your life around. God does something great in your life. You actually give the Holy Spirit, you know, your body, mind and soul to take control, to lead you, to guide you. And you allow that seed of Christ to germinate and grow in you. The new birth produces a nature, point number two, that cannot sin. When you're a child of God, you will easily distinguish between right and wrong. Sin and evil are always present. And without being spiritually inclined, sometimes we will fall into the enemy's trap. But I pray this morning, not you and I. We are a blessed and chosen generation. Remember 2020, God appointed us to be here at this time, right now. He knew that this generation can handle the things that are coming our way. Point number three, it produces a righteous nature. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21 read, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become righteousness of God, so that in him you and I can become the righteousness of God. Beloved, we all have this righteous nature. But we can only use it and activate it when we encounter this new birth of leaving the old and getting on with the new and doing what Jesus wants us to do. Point number four, it produces a divine nature. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 4 reads, Through these he has given us a very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. You see, there are evil desires in this world. But God wants you to partake of his divine nature. He wants you to escape the corruption in the world. So beloved, the choice is yours and, I, yours and mine this morning. Do we continue to live by the flesh? Continue to sin? And there's a chance, well not there is a chance, we will not inherit heaven. We are destined for hell. I pray this morning that you and I will choose wisely. We will choose God. We will choose life. Every born again person has two natures. Old from the old birth and new from the new birth. By the old birth, we are children of the flesh. By the new birth, we are children of God. Therefore, we must be born again. Amen. I pray this morning that we will give our hearts to God. We will surrender all to him. I pray that you are blessed. This morning, do what's right. God is knocking at your heart's door. Accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. The song, one of my favorite golden oldies is, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. All things have passed away. I'm born again. Yes, beloved, let us be born again this morning. Take care. God bless you. Have a fantastic day.